Good day, everyone. Father Jim here. Hope you're doing well on this Tuesday. And it is the 20th day of August. And today we celebrate a memorial of a saint, St. Bernard, abbot as well as doctor of the church. So Bernard was born in the year 1090 and he died in 1153. He was born near Dijon. And he died in Clairvaux, France. He was of a noble family. He received a careful education in his youth. And with his father, his brother, and 30 noblemen, he entered the Benedictine monastery of Citeaux. Two years later, he led a group of monks to establish a house at Clairvaux and became its abbot. The monastic rule, which he perfected at Clairvaux, became the model for 163 monasteries of the Cistercian Reform. He was a theologian, a poet, an orator, and a writer. Is one of the last of the church fathers. And so we'll read from both of our scripture readings today. Our first reading comes from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 28, beginning with verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, thus says the Lord God, because you are haughty of heart, you say, a god am I. I occupy a godly throne in the heart of the sea. And yet you were a man not a god. However, you may think yourself like a god. Oh yes, you are wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that is beyond you. By your wisdom and your intelligence, you have made riches for yourself. You have put gold and silver into your treasuries. By your great wisdom applied to your trading, you have heaped up your riches. Your heart has grown haughty from your riches. Therefore, says the Lord God, because you have thought yourself to have the mind of a god, Therefore, I will bring against you foreigners, the most barbarous of nations. They shall draw their swords against your boastous wisdom. They shall run them through your splendid apparel. They shall thrust you down to the pit, there to die, a bloodied corpse in the heart of the sea. Will you then say, I am a god, when you face your murderers? No, you are a man, not a god. Hand it over to those who will slay you. You shall die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of foreigners, for I have spoken, says the Lord God. And our gospel today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, beginning with verse 23. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men this is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? And Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you have followed me in the new age when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourself sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. So our readings today all raise a similar question in what or in whom do I place my trust or happiness? In the reading from Ezekiel, the Prince of Tyre places his trust for happiness in his human wisdom and intelligence, which he uses to gather riches for himself. While those riches may provide some pleasure and a sense of security for a time, they will inevitably come to a bitter end. As Jesus says to his disciples, we are misguided even by placing our ultimate trust for happiness in our brothers or sisters or father or mother or children. They too will pass. With Peter, we must be willing to give up everything and follow the Lord. He alone can offer us joy that endures forever. Therefore, we must ask ourselves, what thing or even person do we feel we cannot live without? Do we place our trust in food or drink or material goods for relief from the woes of this life? Are we willing to let go of Sunday plans, an exercise routine, an innocent hobby, 
screen time or a moment with our family to ensure that we have time for prayer with the Lord? Are we willing to leave behind everything and perhaps everyone in our lives to respond to whatever mission the Lord asks of us in prayer? If so, we would be standing solidly on the one and only foundation that endures until eternal life. Once again, the gospel is so challenging to us as we live our lives each day. Well, let us pray. And I'll take the prayer from the Mass today, the opening prayer for St. Bernard of Clairvaux. And so we pray. So as I find it. O Lord, who through the apostolic ministry of St. Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, you gave your church the beginnings of religion. Look on her with kindness. Grant her, we pray, through their, his intercession, constant increase in Christian devotion. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I well, hope your Tuesday is going well as we continue to move through this week. Let us keep praying for one another. God bless you. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, pray for us.